Hi, I'm Infernum, and this is my recap for the anime I was reincarnated as the Seventh Prince. If you like my recaps, please subscribe. The story begins with showing a person lying on the floor, beaten up, surrounded by nobles who mock him. One of the nobles tells him that he will be allowed to strike him once using magic. He immediately begins to use magic, but it fails to reach the noble, disappearing as soon as it touches him. Then the noble demonstrates his magic by hurling a fireball at the person on the floor, who, engulfed in flames, reveals in the magic that kills him. Before dying, he asks only for the opportunity to learn and master magic to perfection, and then he opens his eyes to find Find many maids before him. Thinking they are giants, he immediately decides to use a fireball, destroying the castle floor where he was born, shocking all the maids. We are shown the city where the main character is reincarnated as the seventh prince of the country. The maids cannot find him, and he hides from them, but he encounters the guards, whom he asks not to tell the servants anything. However, while they chat with him, he escapes from them. The seventh prince, named Prince Lloyd, cares little for his position and fame. All he wants is to discover the spells hidden in the castle and does everything to study them. Sneaking into the library, he retrieves a book and intends to read it, only to be met by the maid, Silpha, with which he immediately entered into a duel in the courtyard. Lloyd doubts whether he needs to wield a sword at all, as magic is more interesting to him. However, Silpha insists that as a member of the royal family, Lloyd must possess close combat skills. Silpha claims that Lloyd is getting stronger every day, but at the same time, Lloyd says that she is not fighting at full strength. However, Lloyd cheats and copies her technique, ultimately causing Silpha to fight against herself. Despite her experience, Silpha loses to him because she is older than him. Lloyd decides to try to enhance himself with magic, strengthening his body, enlarging his sword, and using levitation magic to cover all his weaknesses. He almost defeats Silpha, but she notices that Lloyd is cheating and defeats him. Nonetheless, she is very happy for Lloyd because he used two magics at once, although Lloyd actually used four spells simultaneously, which Silpha did not notice. We are shown a bathhouse where the maids relax in the evenings, but everything would be normal if Silpha hadn't taken Lloyd with her. Lucky for the kid, other maids approached them and told them about the demon in the forbidden library under the castle, which holds incredible books full of magic information. Lloyd immediately liked this idea and decided to go there in the evening, completely concealing his presence using wind magic. He sneaked past the guards, but there was a seal on the door erected by the ten strongest mages of the kingdom. However, Lloyd easily broke the seal. Upon entering, Lloyd was greatly surprised to realize that he had lived here for ten years and had never noticed the library. Library. As he picked up a book, the demon they had talked about appeared before him, named Grimoire. Grimoire was very surprised that Lloyd managed to break the seal and enter, and he asked Lloyd to release him from the seal in the book, offering him gold. However, Lloyd immediately saw through him, because he turned dust into gold to deceive him, and Lloyd said that he would renew the demon's seal so that he could study magic peacefully, to which the demon was greatly frightened and promised to teach Lloyd ancient magic. Lloyd fell for it and created a key, releasing the demon from the seal. However, after the demon was released, he immediately decided to attack Lloyd using the demon's strongest magic. However, Lloyd erected the strongest barrier around himself, which even the demon's magic could not penetrate. Angered, the demon relentlessly attacked Lloyd but still could not break the barrier. Lloyd decided to take a risk and try the demon's magic on himself in order to study it. After understanding its meaning, he asked the demon to show him something else. The demon used its strongest technique, splitting into two heads and using a double spell. However, Lloyd easily neutralized the power of these spells, frightening the demon, who then tried to escape. Lloyd quickly erected a barrier to trap the demon inside. Then, Lloyd decided to test the demon one last time, striking it with a fire attack and asking it to demonstrate defensive magic. However, the demon could not deflect such an attack and was completely defeated. Lloyd restored the library to its original state and the demon decided to serve Lloyd as he had lost to him and could not do anything against him. The demon would stand out too much if he went with Lloyd, so he agreed to shrink. After shrinking, the demon immediately thought that he could gain Lloyd's trust and then attack him. However, as soon as he got under Lloyd's cloak, he realized how dense his mana was, and that the demon wouldn't even be able to lay a finger on him. The next morning, we are shown nobles training some boy who is going to the library, where Lloyd is reading books. The demon serving Lloyd warned that someone is coming. Lloyd ordered him to hide, and then he greeted his brother, Albert. They went to the training ground where Albert used magic to hit the targets. Lloyd said he is the second prince of the kingdom, very smart and strong. He always carries magic with him because he rarely gets the chance to practice in the castle. Lloyd doesn't want to stand out 
and isn't interested in the throne. He decided not to use powerful magic, but simply make fireballs touch the targets. The demon said it's much harder. Albert seemed to understand and said he wants to take a break, leaving Lloyd alone. Lloyd was glad because now he could try any spell without anyone seeing. Possessing the demon, he said he wants to try double magic, which the demon used last time. As they started using magic, the demon couldn't handle Lloyd's pressure and nearly choked. Lloyd tried to combine a hundred spells, but the demon said it's impossible. Only two, three advanced spells can be combined. Lloyd borrowed the demon's mouth, combining two, three spells, but the demon couldn't handle it because Lloyd tried to combine two different spells. Lloyd immediately understood the meaning of double spells and was able to combine them, causing everything in the capital to shake. At the table, Albert bombarded him with questions about why he brought Lloyd along. Albert explained that they didn't even notice Lloyd touched all the targets with one spell and that Lloyd will be incredibly powerful. Looking out the window, noticed that night had fallen. The demon said Lloyd managed to puncture their atmosphere, causing night in their kingdom. Lloyd regained control and closed the hole. Every morning, the demon takes care of Lloyd, as if he were a child. The next day, Lloyd's antics were written about in the newspaper, mentioning the mysterious hole in the sky. Lloyd saw news about first-class adventurers clearing dungeons. He said he would go to the dungeon now, but the demon warned him that if he left and they couldn't find him, everyone would worry. Eventually, Lloyd said he had taken care of it. Using tree magic, Lloyd created a perfect copy of himself, but due to Sylphie, he couldn't leave the castle, and an ideal replica couldn't be made without her. Lloyd came up with the idea of implanting the demon's consciousness into the cop so the demon would be in place of Lloyd. The demon admitted the doll turned out great, with even mana circulating in it. Lloyd said he was very happy that Grimm became his familiar. Lloyd managed to leave the castle, but he didn't know where to look for the dungeon. Seeing a girl below running from a horde of monsters, he thought she was in trouble. However, he saw that she effortlessly destroyed the monsters one by one. She had warrior written on her back, indicating she was a martial arts master who could control energy called Chi in other countries using her breath. She noticed Lloyd hiding and called him to come down, thinking he was an enemy. Lloyd immediately changed his appearance and introduced himself as Robert, creating a completely different person by merging two appearances. She confessed her name was Tao, and she was a rank 2 adventurer. Our Tao immediately fell in love with our Robert. Robert said he would like to propose to her to clear the dungeon together, to which Tao immediately agreed. In the dungeon, Tao began to demonstrate her strength and how powerful she was by making a fire deep in the cave. Lloyd started asking her about Chi, which she uses. Tao began to explain that through breath, one can elevate their strength to a new level. While Tao was talking, Lloyd tried to use Chi breathing but couldn't succeed, finding it difficult. Tao started to worry about him since he started trying it without any knowledge. Lud felt a different flow of breath besides Mana. Tao decided to tell him more. She told him to keep breathing until they left the cave. While the real Lud was learning about breathing, Sylphie approached the copy. Tao showed Lloyd one of the main Chi techniques, explosive Chi, defeating the dungeon boss. Lloyd realized that after defeating the boss, a chest would appear. Tao noticed that Lloyd had already mastered Chi breathing, opening the chest. They were immediately attacked at an incredible speed, but Lloyd quickly reacted and saved them from the attack, facing a new boss, the Lich. Tao immediately reacted to Lich and said that it was a nonsense monster, and Lloyd needed to get out. She used her technique on him and threw Lloyd out, saying that he would be able to survive. Tao immediately said that she did not expect to see Lich here, as he was incredibly strong, and she would buy time for Lloyd to survive. Lloyd was surprised that Tao threw him back, and he decided to stop. Lloyd immediately thought that Tao might have deliberately thrown him out, as it could be dangerous. Lloyd wanted to seek advice from Grimm, but Grimm asked Lloyd to return home quickly. Tao was already overwhelmed, as she had no strength left, and she wanted to escape. But the Lich began to speak, saying that he once ate a guy who also had Chi energy, which angered Tao, and she decided to attack seriously. She attacked the Lich, but he erected a barrier. Tao said she didn't care about barriers since she had been practicing and studying Chi since childhood and she didn't even have a boyfriend. Tao broke through Lich's barrier and fell to her knees, as she had expended all her Chi energy and couldn't even move a finger. Lich told her that she wasted all her energy on the barrier in vain, as he still had plenty of mana. Dealing his blow, Lich struck Tao, thinking he had defeated her. But then Lloyd arrived, who saved her with his barrier, telling her not to give up so easily, and he would deal with Lich quickly because he needed to get home urgently. Lloyd attacked Lich, using Chi energy, surprising both Tao and Lich, as he had never practiced with Chi before. Lloyd realized how to gather Chi energy correctly, but while he was doing it inside his barrier, Lich thought Lloyd wanted to escape and decided to strike his barrier. Lloyd realized that the barrier was hindering him with Chi, so he dispelled it. Lich thought he had managed to break through the barrier and attacked Lloyd again, but Lloyd took in more air and gathered a lot of Chi energy flow. While dodging Lich's blows, Lloyd merged the mana streams and Chi energy into one, reflecting Lich's powerful strikes. Tao and Lich were surprised again as Lloyd created mini Rasengans and sent them towards Lich. Lloyd started to push back Lich, who eventually surrendered, unable to understand where Lloyd's speed came from, thinking Lloyd was a sorcerer, while he used mana and chi together. Lloyd made them even thinner and sharper.
sharper. In the end, Lich used a barrier to defend himself, but Lloyd pierced it effortlessly and defeated Lich. Tao was pleased because Lloyd understood what Chi was. After defeating Lich, they returned to the chest where they found an old dagger. Tao remarked that they wasted time and there was nothing worthy here, but Lloyd mentioned that this sword contained mana and he wanted to keep it for himself. Tao agreed, and the chest began to sink into the ground since Lloyd had already taken his reward from it. Eventually, Tao said that the dungeon was closing and they needed to leave. They managed to run outside just before the dungeon closed. Tao mentioned that Robert, Lloyd, turned out to be a sorcerer, but in the end, he used chi techniques because he wanted to comfort Tao, especially after Lich had tormented her. Lloyd replied that he just wanted to try something new. Then, Lloyd remembered that he urgently needed to go home, so he flew up into the air. Tao stated that by the next time, she would become much stronger to enchant Lloyd someday. But Lloyd had already flown away, leaving Tao to contemplate how to find him. As for Lloyd, he arrived home and found Grimm lying on the floor, beaten up, complaining about Sylphie. Because Sylphie noticed during sparring that Lloyd's copia had lost its edge and decided to start from scratch with his training. However, it wasn't Lloyd, but Grimm. In the end, Lloyd patted Grimm and sympathized with him. Grimm began to complain that Lloyd was late because of the useless sword, to which Lloyd replied that it wasn't useless and started cleaning the blade. He then realized that it was covered in concentrated mana, an enchantment on the sword that made it stronger. Lloyd split this mana and decided to analyze its essence to create his own spell. By purifying the water, he dissolved the solution into its elements, understanding which elements were involved in its creation, and they decided to find them. Approaching his father, he asked for silver for his new spell, but his father thought he wanted to spend it on something else. The next day, Lloyd and Sylphie resumed their training. Lloyd once again tested some cunning move, which surprised Sylphie, but she quickly hit her surprise and struck back. In the end, Lloyd sparred with Sylphie because he needed oil, and Sylphie handed him the oil. Taking the oil, he went on to make mana essence. After he made it, he asked Albert if one of his knights could lend him a sword because Lloyd wanted to enchant it. The knights started to complain, thinking Lloyd was too young and would ruin all the swords they had. After some time, Lloyd and Grimm decided to apply the essence to the swords together, but after just a few applications, one sword after another began to break. Eventually, they realized how much mana the swords could withstand. In the end, he reported to Albert that out of 120 swords, he was only able to enchant 50 and the rest had broken. Albert appreciated the swords and realized how talented Lloyd was. Enchanting swords at such a young age was incredible. One knight began to mock Lloyd, saying that there were no enchantments at all and he just gave up, but we need to pretend as if he enchanted it. Sylphie started to get angry at the knight because she hears everything, but as soon as the knight put the sword in its sheath, they were immediately cut and the knight was shocked. Lloyd asked Albert to evaluate his swords on a real creatures, to which Albert said they had a mission to defeat a monster. Early in the morning, the boy prepares his newspaper stand for sales, and then he sees in front of him a cart with Albert, Sylphie, and Lloyd, who was sleeping on Albert's shoulder. They are heading out with the guards outside the city to check the enchanted swords made by Lloyd. Lloyd woke up, and Albert pointed his finger to the forest, indicating they had arrived. In the forest, Lloyd began asking where the monster lives. Sylphie replied that the monster lives not in the forest, but closer to the river. Lloyd said he was very excited because he wanted to see how strong his enchanted swords were. Albert started bombarding Sylphie with questions about Lloyd and how she loves him, and while they chatted, bandits attacked them. Everyone prepared for battle. Grimm noticed that Lloyd had long known about the enemies, as he learned about their detection through Chi energy, which he studied from Tao. The knight struck the monster with his sword, and was shocked to see that he cut it despite the weak blow. In the end, all the knights easily dealt with the monsters. Albert started praising Lloyd for having such a cool brother, and while they were chatting, a monster attacked them unexpectedly. But then Tao appeared and saved Lloyd from the monster. Lloyd almost blew his cover by calling Tao by name, and Tao also paid attention to him, saying she came here because she felt Albert, but instead found Lloyd. Sylphie killed another monster that was about to attack them, and told Tao not to get too familiar with Lloyd, because Lloyd is the heir to the throne. Tao said she sensed the monster coming from behind, and she knows everything. In the end, Albert intervened, and they decided to stop for the evening, setting up a camp to rest. Tao talked to Albert, and said she sensed someone else, not Lloyd. Eventually, Lloyd admitted that Tao is very good at recognizing people by their energy. Lloyd decided to hide in the tent, but there, he found Sylphie, who decided to change clothes. She caught Lloyd nearby and teased him, and while they joked, Tao arrived, surprised by what she saw. Sylphie and Tao started arguing with each other, and Lloyd found an opportunity to leave them. He went to Albert, who said Lloyd is a heartbreaker, and it would be better for him not to have so many girls because it could backfire. Sylphie and Tao regained their senses and realized that the knights were watching them, and in the next moment, they defeated them and got back to business. Tao explained that she came here because she received a mission from the guild to get rid of the bear wolf. While they were talking, the bear wolf found them on its own. The bear wolf easily pushed back the knights, but then Tao intervened, using her chi energy to knock it onto its back with one blow. Although it managed to get back up, Tao acknowledged its strength. Then Albert intervened, using his fiery magic along with his sword to defeat the bear 
wolf with a single spell, immediately noticing Lloyd because it was thanks to him that the spell was very strong. While everyone was celebrating the victory, Grimm noticed that there was a demon sealed in the temple, and suddenly the defeated bear wolf rose from the dead, and a demon emerged from its throat, which began to speak and control all the monsters in the area, ordering all his monsters to kill the knights. Albert and Tao immediately noticed that the monsters were regenerating quickly. Grimm told Lloyd that he had long noticed how the demon was controlling the monsters through magic transmission. Silphy kept an eye on Tao, who was barely fighting, saying that Tao needed to hurry up and defeat everyone. The demon decided to taunt Lloyd, saying that Lloyd was a whiny boy who hides behind everyone. Silphy heard this and got angry, while Tao immediately felt his power. Silphy decided to kill the demon and show what she was capable of. She drew her sword from its sheath and began to fight the demon. The demon didn't take her words seriously and began to talk about how she wouldn't be able to defeat the monster as they could regenerate endlessly. Silphy said that the demon's breath stinks and maybe he could shut his mouth, which angered the demon and he attacked Silphy, but she instantly reacted to his attack and cut off all the wolf's limbs. The demon realized that he needed to take the fight with Silphy seriously and decided to use all his strength against her. The other monsters stopped regenerating and froze in place. Grimm explained how to use mana transmission, saying that even for a demon, it's not easy to do. In the end, Lloyd quickly understood and managed to create a pink flower with a pleasant smell. Meanwhile, Silphy easily defeated the demon. The demon realized that Silphy had no weak spots. Silphy borrowed a sword from one of the knights, praising Lloyd's sword enchantment incredibly. The demon decided to attack Silphy one last time and managed to swallow her, thinking she had already lost. However, Silphy burst out from within, cutting the demon open and using the dual sword technique she possessed to easily destroy the demon. Silphy showed just how strong she truly is. All the knights in the area were stunned, watching the art of dual swords. While Silphy was fighting the demon, Lloyd managed to transmit his mana and create a living example of Silphy's dual sword technique. Silphy approached the dying demon and told him that he wouldn't be able to lay a finger on Lloyd while she was around. Lloyd and Grimm continue to study mana transmission, while Silphy tries to finish off the demon. However, Silphy noticed that the demon emitted miasma from its mouth, causing everyone to collapse to the ground. Anyone who breathes in the demon's miasma is unable to stand. The demon revealed that it had long since broken the seal and escaped. While everyone lay incapacitated, the demon managed to strike Silphy. When he attempted to strike her again, Tao appeared and blocked his attack, stepping in to protect Silphy, who couldn't move. Tao told Silphy to gather herself, but Silphy insisted that Tao should flee and protect Lloyd instead. Silphy collapsed leaving Tao alone with the demon, as everyone else on the battlefield had long since given up. Tao began to attack the demon again, and the demon noticed that Tao was able to breathe the miasma, because she possesses her own chi breath. Enraged, Tao unleashed her strongest attack, but the demon quickly recovered and seized her. The demon decided to use its miasma on her. In the meantime, Tao noticed Robert, whom she had met earlier, appearing nearby. Tao was consumed by the demon, who then decided to seek revenge on Silphy. While he did so, Lloyd appeared beside him, asking about about the bear wolves he had also captured using his miasma. But suddenly, the demon snapped out of it, unable to understand how Lloyd could breathe in the miasma at all. The demon noticed Grimm next to Lloyd and began to speak to him about how far a demon could stoop to serve a human. Grimm became enraged and told the demon, Brother, I would like to give you advice, but apparently you don't need it, because this boy is about to crush you. The demon decided to attack Lloyd with all his tamed wolves, but Lloyd decided to use mana transmission and managed to subdue all the monsters attacking him as well as tame them. Lloyd saved Tao, as the wolf that had swallowed her also came under Lloyd's control. Eventually, the wolf spat Tao out onto the ground, and Lloyd covered her with his cloak. The demon ordered the wolves to attack Lloyd, but the wolves regained consciousness and turned on the demon, remembering that he had killed them and their families. However, the demon easily defeated all the wolves. The demon decided to deal with Lloyd himself, using his magic to its fullest extent. Seeing this, Lloyd decided to show him his own magic, causing the demon to freeze in place. Grimm, looking at the demon, told him that he finally understood why Grimm served Lloyd. Lloyd always restrained his mana, which even demons couldn't compare to. Lloyd decided not to hold back, immediately erecting a barrier. The demon noticed this and tried to escape, realizing that Lloyd wasn't trying to kill him. The demon realized that Lloyd was trying to capture him, not kill him. The demon tries to escape from Lloyd, and Grimm asked Lloyd, how many spells can you use? Lloyd replied that he could use about 20 spells at once, but with Grimm's help, he could use even more. Grimm entered Lloyd's hand, and as a result, he easily managed 
managed to trap the demon in a spatial barrier. Lloyd told the demon that he would have to pay for his actions, as he not only killed the wolves, but also bred them with others. Lloyd decided to punish the demon, who began to beg for mercy and forgiveness, fearing that he might die from so many spells. Lloyd decided to accelerate the chanting of his spells, using about 240 spells per minute, and struck the demon inside the barrier. After five minutes, the spells stopped, and the demon simply couldn't endure it anymore but remained conscious. Lloyd defeated the demon, and at that moment, everyone around began to come to their senses. Lloyd noticed this, and decided to distract them. Grimm decided to have a final conversation with the demon, who was already fading away. In the end, he told the demon that he served Lloyd because he wanted to gain strength and defeat Lloyd in the future. Lloyd, on the other hand, told everyone that someone named Robert had come and defeated the demon. Tao heard this, and was immediately inspired by the news. Lloyd and the knights returned to the city, where they were praised by the king for not only defeating the monster, but also the demon. The king immediately inquired about the adventurers, who had assisted them in battle. Lloyd lied to Tao, claiming he saw Robert in the forest, prompting Tao to chase after him. Albert failed to stop Tao in time, so he told the king that they had fled. However, Albert informed the king that the greatest contribution was made not by Robert and Tao, but by Lloyd himself. He emphasized that it was Lloyd who deserved to fight for the throne, as it was thanks to him that they had survived and defeated the demon. The king offered Lloyd the chance to compete for the throne, but Lloyd declined. As Lloyd played with Grimm, they were suddenly approached by the bear wolf, which had followed them. Grimm explained that it was due to Lloyd's mana. Sylphie approached and admired Lloyd's new pet, and Lloyd named him Snowball. He began to ask Sylphie about how to properly train a pet, and Sylphie explained that many people trained pets using magic. Observing all this were the king and Albert, who were impressed by Lloyd. The king was particularly curious about what Lloyd would become in the future. Lloyd, along with Sylphie and Snowball, is training Snowball in basic commands. However, Lloyd struggles to teach Snowball the necessary tasks, even attempting to embed commands in mana, which also fails. Sylphie suggests seeking help from someone knowledgeable, and they both recall a person in the Garden Tower, Princess Alice. Lloyd expresses that it's a bad idea. Upon arriving at the tower, they immediately notice many different animals. Grimm asks who Princess Alice is, and Lloyd introduces her as the sixth princess. Alice instantly pounces on Lloyd and kisses him on the lips, causing Lloyd to lose consciousness. Alice quickly realizes Lloyd is there because of the bear wolf and starts cuddling the creature. Lloyd asks her to demonstrate one of the monsters, but before he can finish, Fenrir, an advanced form of the bear wolf, appears. Lloyd is shocked as he didn't sense Fenrir approaching. Lloyd is further astonished, realizing he didn't hear Alice summon Fenrir. He asks Alice to teach him her methods. Alice explains that it's complicated, and emphasizes the importance of loving the monster. According to Alice, understanding love allows one to connect with any monster. Lloyd immediately grasps Alice's point and starts showing interest in love, which Sylphie misinterprets as something inappropriate. Lloyd notices mana emanating from Alice's head, which she uses to give commands, though she herself is unaware of this ability. Lloyd decided to give it a try, and Snowball immediately started following his commands. Everyone noticed that Lloyd didn't even need to speak. He could give commands mentally. Alice insisted that it wasn't just that, but rather love, and began to pout. Lloyd supported her, agreeing that love was indeed essential. With Snowball and Sylphie, Lloyd left the tower, but then Albert appeared, saying he had urgent matters and wanted to introduce Lloyd to someone. He introduced his elder brother, Diane, the fourth prince. Diane wanted to discuss the enchanted sword that Lloyd had created for Albert. Angry and skeptical, Diane wanted to test Lloyd, thinking he might be deceiving everyone. As a blacksmith, Diane couldn't just let this go. He placed a sword on the table and demanded Lloyd enchant it, doubting that Lloyd could perform such a difficult task so easily. While Lloyd worked on enchanting the sword, Diane intended to teach him a lesson. However, when Lloyd finished, Diane was astonished that the enchantment was successful. Diane lifted Lloyd and proclaimed that with Lloyd's help, he could create the perfect sword, one that would surpass any ordinary enchanted blade. He wanted Lloyd to enchant the sword during the forging process. Diane explained that he had loved magic since childhood, but lacked the talent, and asked Lloyd for his assistance. Lloyd agreed, eager to learn about the forging process himself. Lloyd asked Diane what kind of magic he needed to infuse into the sword. Diane replied with fire magic. So Lloyd created a fire seal and applied it to the steel. However, the steel couldn't withstand it and immediately shattered. After several failed attempts, Lloyd became frustrated because nothing was working. Grimm decided to help and mentioned that there might be something wrong with the mana essence that Diane had bought cheaply. Sylphie suggested they go to a dungeon to find the proper resources for the essence. They headed to the Adventurer's Guild where they filled out a form. When Lloyd saw the crystal ball that evaluated mana, he realized he needed to hold 
hold back. He suppressed his mana to 1%, resulting in an E-rank evaluation, which made people behind him laugh. Sylphie was furious. The men started talking about the Silver Knight, who was the strongest, and had disappeared. Unbeknownst to them, the Silver Knight was Sylphie herself. Suddenly, Tao appeared and offered to help Lloyd, but Sylphie grabbed Lloyd and decided to leave. Sylphie asked Tao to remove Lloyd's cloak and return it, but Tao refused. Nevertheless, Sylphie managed to take it back. Lloyd was surprised, because Sylphie was an experienced adventurer, and they ventured into the dungeon. Meanwhile, Diane and Albert discussed Lloyd, and when he would return. Albert mentioned that time was short because war was imminent. He advised Diane not to worry about the war but to focus on making swords that would aid in the conflict. Just then, Lloyd arrived, and together with Diane, they forged a sword. They immediately tested it on the training ground, and everyone was shocked by the sword's power. It was incredibly strong. In the evening, Lloyd lay down in his cot, feeling very tired. Making the sword was not an easy task, especially because they had customized it for each night. Lloyd noticed something unusual in the central estate that even Grimm had overlooked. An assassin infiltrated the castle and was immediately caught in Lloyd's trap. Lloyd decided to have a chat with her, pointing out that she had entered illegally. The assassin used a poison spell, but Lloyd noticed and countered with purification. However, the assassin claimed that it wouldn't help, and suddenly Lloyd collapsed. She apologized to him, explaining that her poison was resistant to purification. Lloyd realized she was using an unknown toxin, likely one infused with mana. The assassin revealed that she had been poisoning people since birth and studying poisons since childhood. Breaking the barrier, she bid Lloyd farewell and left. Lloyd found himself admiring her, impressed by how gracefully she had evaded him. Grimm noticed Lloyd and urged him to quickly remove the poison. Lloyd assured him that he had already done so and that her poison wouldn't affect him. He let her go because he wanted her to lead him to their hideout. Following her mana trail, Lloyd located her. He confidently approached, causing the assassins to assess his strength and acknowledge his power. Lloyd lowered his barrier and decided to test them, applying Tao's technique. He suggested that the assassins attack him first, and immediately he effortlessly defended against the strikes of one of the guys, a very agile one named Vavilon. While Lloyd was focused on Vavilon, Raven appeared behind him and knocked him down, a huge man named Galileo, and he attacked Lloyd. Lloyd released a bit of his power and defended himself from the blow. Then, a sweet girl named Boletalia appeared before him. She had the ability to share her pain with others by inflicting injuries on herself. Lloyd smiled, intrigued by her ability, and instantly healed his wounds. Multiplying his strength, he decided to mimic Sylphie's style and instructed the assassins to defend themselves. Galileo remembered Sylphie's stance, who had once wounded him. The assassins were shocked by Lloyd's power and started to flee, but Lloyd didn't try to kill them. He simply wanted to understand them all. Utilizing Sylphie's technique, he easily defeated Raven. Lloyd unexpectedly attacked Boletalia, but she warned him that if he harmed her, he would receive a reflected blow. Convinced of this, Galileo attacked Lloyd from behind, but Lloyd struck him with lightning. However, Galileo used armor that absorbed the blow. He approached Ren, who poisoned him, but Galileo intervened to defend her, thinking Lloyd wanted to kill him. Galileo confessed that if they could control their magic, they wouldn't be called corrupt. Lloyd decided to strike Galileo, and Ren became angry. Galileo realized that he could control mana now, as Lloyd intentionally infused him with magic to help him control it. Galileo began to cry tears of joy, as he had long desired this ability. Looking at the others, Lloyd helped them all, and now they could all control mana themselves. Everyone rejoiced, believing that their lives would improve. The assassins decided to recruit Lloyd into their group, but Ren refused to acknowledge him because he made weapons for war. Grimm intervened, stating that Lloyd made weapons not of his own will, but for the sake of amusement. Galileo decided to tell Lloyd a story he didn't know, about their leader, Jade, who could teleport. Jade was the least fortunate, as he teleported involuntarily, far away each time, always returning home from distant places. While Galileo was telling the story, a letter suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Sylphie arrived at the spot, thinking she had managed to save Lloyd, but no one was there. Only the letter remained, which was brought to Albert. The letter stated that Lloyd had gone with the assassin to the Lardosta estate. Albert began to worry about Lloyd, thinking that Lardosta had kidnapped him, but Diane intervened, saying that no one could kidnap Lloyd. Sylphie was unhappy and brought Lloyd's clothes, saying that he had split from them. Albert, seeing this, got angry and decided to declare war against Lardosta for kidnapping Lloyd. Meanwhile, Lloyd arrived at the estate with the assassins. In the previous episode, we saw how Lloyd, along with the assassins, received a letter with a message from Jade, indicating he would meet them at the Lardist mansion. Everyone was excited about this. However, Lloyd read the message and smiled knowingly. Earlier, Lloyd had explained that they were mistaken about the letter. It had been teleported to them intentionally, as it couldn't have arrived by accident. Everyone started to suspect that Jade had deceived them and that he knew how to use his magic. Lloyd reassured them, saying he would go with them and that there was nothing to worry about. Lloyd and the assassins arrived at the mansion, but as soon as they landed, everyone was shocked by Lloyd's incredible speed. While 
While everyone else lay on the ground recovering, Ren went into the forest to gather food. They then recounted Ren's past. She had abandoned her parents because her poison was harmful to them. But Jade was the only one who accepted her and found a way to interact with her despite the poison, often collapsing because of it. Ren didn't want to harm Jade and tried to leave multiple times, but the assassins accepted her and did everything they could to ensure her poison didn't affect them when they were near her. This is how Ren came to love Jade, seeing him as everything to her. Jade made her an outfit imbued with magic that prevented her from releasing poison accidentally. Ren cried tears of joy, and from then on, she regarded Jade as a brother. Lloyd expressed his desire to meet Jade. Ren cooked a stew, and everyone was unsure if it was safe to eat, but Lloyd began eating it, saying it turned out delicious. Lloyd reminisced about his past when he was poor, and had to eat much worse food than this. Everyone ate, and started praising Ren for the tasty meal. In the past, Jade had confessed that he was the third son of the Lardist Mansion, and that he dreamed of ending the war, raging in Lardist. He expected everyone to be shocked, but instead, they accepted him, and said they would accompany him and help him. However, Jade promised that he would deal with his family on his own, because if they helped him, they would become enemies of Lardust. Jade told them they were his true family, and promised to become the ruler of Lardust, and return to them. Lloyd fell asleep, and Galileo commented on how strong Lloyd was, but as soon as he fell asleep, he became vulnerable. Grimm noted that even in his sleep, Lloyd maintained control over the barrier. The assassins decided to check on Jade, and asked Grimm to watch over Lloyd. Grimm replied that it was safe to leave Lloyd there, as no one could harm him. The assassins went inside and saw many people enjoying a feast. They thought everything was fine until an unfamiliar person appeared behind them, recognized the assassins, and invited them inside. Everyone sat at the table and dined. Grimm wanted to go back and get Lloyd, but Ren didn't let him leave. Jade appeared before them, and all the assassins were delighted to see him. Grimm nudged Ren to encourage her to speak to Jade, and she finally confessed that she missed him. However, Jade suddenly said he didn't care, and used magic to subdue all the assassins to the ground. Jade intended to auction them off, but Grimm used magic to try and help everyone. However, Jade appeared behind Grimm and knocked him away. Grimm ended up being thrown near Lloyd, who woke up to see a beaten Grimm in front of him. Jade, meanwhile, was laughing at the assassins. It turned out that Jade had brought demons from the underworld, and that he was originally from the demonic realm. He had spent his life dreaming of taking over Jade's body because Jade had the power of teleportation. The demon revealed that he had tormented Jade, trying all this time to take over his body. The demon explained that Jade had begged him not to harm the assassins, but the demon told Jade he would go and kill them all. Jade then decided to end his life, but the demon turned back time, healed him, and made Jade's body his own. Jade had tried to kill himself in various ways because he didn't want to harm the assassins. Ultimately, Jade couldn't endure it. His psyche broke, and he would never return. All the assassins were helpless and couldn't even move. Ren was speechless. The demon looked at Ren's hand and saw a spell. He demanded that Ren tell him what the spell was. Ren resisted, trying not to reveal anything to the demon, remembering how Jade had cared for her. Ren was on the verge of despair, but suddenly Lloyd appeared above with his spell. Lloyd protected everyone with a barrier and annihilated all the demons present with a nuclear blast, leaving only a crater beneath him. He said, it was I who left the spell on her. Lloyd, along with Grimm, left a crater on the ground, astonishing all the demons. Lloyd approached Ren and healed her, as she had tried to bite off her tongue to keep from revealing everything to the demon. Lloyd ordered them to leave, declaring that he would handle Gizarm himself. The assassins fled, and all the demons began to think that Gizarm was dead. However, Gizarm survived and ordered all his demons to chase down the fleeing assassins. Lloyd declared he wouldn't allow it and attacked all the demons. But Gizarm decided to confront Lloyd, making it clear that he would be the one to fight him. Gizarm locked eyes with Lloyd and used a spell of death, sending it towards Lloyd, even passing through barriers. Lloyd was surprised by this and decided to test what would happen if the spell hit him. Grimm asked Lloyd to dodge, warning that nothing good would come if it hit. Dodging the spell, it struck a demon behind him. Lloyd immediately began analyzing the spell and realized that any word he spoke would be fulfilled, causing the demon's heart to stop instantly. Grimm stated that Gizarm was powerful and they needed to escape as he possessed strength equivalent to all the assassins combined. Lloyd understood that Gizarm's mana could pierce his heart at any moment. Grimm explained that demons were classified from first to tenth class, with Grimm being third class, but Gizarm was not even first class. He had royal blood, being a prince of darkness. Even a hundred first class demons would struggle against him, as he was a walking catastrophe. Lloyd, after hearing these words, couldn't retreat because he became very interested in facing such a strong opponent. Gizarm decided to talk to Lloyd, asking him who he really was, 
Lloyd replied that he was just a prince. Gisarm mentioned that Jade had dreamed of meeting Lloyd, just as Lloyd had wished, but that was no longer possible. As they conversed, the conversation shifted to conflict, and the battle began. Grimm said that Lloyd had no chance against Gisarm. Lloyd acknowledged that it wouldn't be easy to defeat Gisarm, just like the other demons. Gisarm created a spear from mana and attacked Lloyd with it, immediately breaking through Lloyd's strongest barrier, which consisted of several layers. Gisarm assessed Lloyd's defense and decided to test it further, attacking him with a massive massive number of mana spears. However, Lloyd dodged them, and while he did, Gizarm teleported behind Lloyd and shattered his barrier with a kick, believing he could now defeat Lloyd with his spear. Lloyd quickly reacted and repelled his spear with a huge earth wall. Assassins watched this and began to worry about Lloyd. Grimm started crying and fretting over Lloyd because Gizarm was incredibly powerful, and Grimm was certain that Lloyd couldn't handle him. Gizarm was surprised that he still hadn't harmed Lloyd and demonstrated his teleportation to him. Lloyd stated that this teleportation wasn't his, it belonged to to Jade. Gisarm replied that Jade couldn't control it, whereas he had mastered this teleportation and could use it not only on himself but also in combat. Gisarm decided to seriously demonstrate his magic, which he had obtained through Jade's teleportation. He could use his spikes and teleport them to anyone at lightning speed. Gisarm began to mock Lloyd, knowing that Lloyd wouldn't have time to react, and even a barrier wouldn't help him because he wouldn't even have time to respond. Suddenly, a spike pierced Lloyd from behind, followed by even more spikes. The assassins decided to fight weak demons. Galileo, together with the Raven, stopped the them using their web magic and the raven's command. Meanwhile, Babylon managed to open the gates, and everyone started passing through the open gates. However, the demons managed to break free from the web and the raven's command. That's when Boletalia decided to intervene. She looked at all the demons and decided to amplify their pain a hundredfold. The demons collapsed in agony and were amazed to see such magic. Boletalia told the other assassins to run while she held them off. However, Ren began to persuade her, knowing she couldn't stay alone here. Galileo pushed Ren away closed the gates behind him, and stayed with Boletalia. He had decided to help her. Galileo said he would buy her all the time she needed to make her strongest strike, even at the cost of his own life. Ren witnessed it all and began to cry. Boletalia decided to end her life by cutting off her head, giving all the pain to the demons. Gizarm thought he had defeated Lloyd, but Lloyd used deception and attacked Gizarm. However, he couldn't strike him as Gizarm managed to teleport away. Lloyd asked Gizarm to change the battleground. At the last moment, when Boletalia was about to deliver her final strike at the cost of her life, flames suddenly engulfed all the demons from above, burning them. Galileo reacted swiftly, grabbed Boletalia, and a sword suddenly cut through the gates, revealing Silpha along with Lloyd's brothers, who had come for Lloyd. Silphy is at the training ground, warming up. She strikes a bale, splitting it into three pieces, noting that they were tightly packed with magic. However, if she puts all her strength into a blow, any sword will bend. Silphy understands that she won't be able to fight at full strength, but if she needs to cut down a demon, she will have to. Everyone arrived to help Lloyd. The assassins thought they were there to assist them, but Albert and Silphy Sylphie turned around and decided to deal with the assassins. Sylphie held her sword to the assassins and demanded they tell her where Lloyd was and why they took him with them. Ren began to explain that Lloyd was fighting a demon in the castle, but the raven immediately shut her mouth and reminded them that they had promised Lloyd not to reveal anything. Lloyd had told the assassins that if someone showed up from the castle, the assassins shouldn't tell them that Lloyd was fighting someone. Sylphie was about to cut off their heads, but Ren said that Lloyd was fighting a weakling. Sylphie got angry and decided to start with Ren, but Albert stopped her and said they should start with an adult. Ren stopped them and began to explain that she understood their concern for Lloyd. She revealed that Lloyd was fighting for them because the demon had taken Jade, who was a member of their family. Suddenly, a demon appeared, but Princess Alice managed to destroy the demon in time. Alice said that Ren was not lying, and if she had lied, her Fenrir would have sensed it and devoured her. Albert ordered Sylphie to find Lloyd and bring him back. Sylphie went after him, but suddenly a blast from the sky destroyed the bridge. Sylphie had to turn around and face the demons who were swimming across. Above, Lloyd and Gizarm destroyed the bridge at Lloyd's request quest, as Lloyd didn't want any interference. Lloyd realized he could now focus and fight seriously. Albert couldn't defeat the demons because they had strong resistance to fire, and even enchanted swords were ineffective against them. Albert started looking for Sylphie but couldn't find her. Meanwhile, Sylphie, on Snowflake, tried to jump over the bridge. Snowflake, remembering Lloyd, wanted to go to him and jump down, ending up in the water. Sylphie decided to jump over the bridge herself, but then, one of Gizarm's servants appeared. Sylphie managed to fend off his attacks. Gizarm's servant, an eighth-class demon, was one of the strongest sword-wielding demons. Sylphie decided to accept his challenge and mockingly said he had poop on his head. Albert realized that the demons had taken over the bodies of the people of Lardosta and wanted to save them. Babylon decided to help Albert, saying that these people couldn't be saved and needed to be destroyed, as the demons had long since destroyed their minds. Accepting this, Albert went to the eternally burning demons and decided to end their nightmare with a single blow. He used his strongest spell, Infernum, commanded the soldiers to abandon mercy and destroyed all the demons. At the same time, 
Silphy was battling Gizarm's servant on equal footing. The assassins watching were stunned by their fight. Both Silphy and the demon were injured, but the demon quickly healed his wounds and began talking about how he wanted to take Silphy's body and her sword style. He explained that he had taken the body of the Lardasta style master, who had honed his skills his entire life. This infuriated Silphy, and she decided to kill the demon with a single blow. She used his own demonic blade, which frightened the demon as Silphy had mastered his style just by observing. Calling Snowflake to her, she retrieved a sword from his fur, a sword specially made for her by Lloyd. She remembered the past when Lloyd made a sword that could withstand her strength, blushing and feeling embarrassed. Lloyd had told her that killing the body a demon possesses would also kill the demon, and that defeating a demon should be done with a single strike. Silphy hugged Lloyd and expressed her happiness at receiving such a sword. She drew her enchanted sword, Demon Death. The demon revealed that their plan was to lure out Jade and start a full-scale war, and Jade had come to stop the war. Ren was enraged upon hearing this, realizing that the demons had intentionally lured Jade out because he wanted to stop the war. She ran towards the demon, but Silphy stopped her, saying she would handle it. Silphy assumed her strongest stance, showcasing her house's style. The demon, deciding to show his power, attacked her, but Silphy easily defeated him. 